Okay, welcome to the Jenkins Platform Special Interest Group. It's the 26th of March. Um, great to be here. So topics for the agenda, I have action items. We'll defer the open container labeling uh, till Gareth's available to attend. I wanted to give a status update on SheCode Africa just so that people are aware. And then we had coordinating proposed Docker changes. Uh, and let's see, topic for me was securing the pipeline, the delivery pipeline, just a brief status there. And this one we had last time, security scanning of images with no, no real change for me. Um, figured we probably ought to review it just to be sure it stays on our list. Alex, any topics you want to be sure we touch? Um, <clears throat> no, I don't think so. Um... Uh, something for a future agenda, maybe, uh, is uh, moving to uh, Java 11 as default for all images. Oh, and oh, very good topic. Yes. Possibly deprecating the Java 8 at some point. Java 11 as default in all our images. Um, We're doing that for Windows images right now. So. Uh, yeah, let's. I think let's let's put it in there. Let's be sure. Uh, we've got Windows now, Windows Docker now. We've got install instructions now. Um, and and it's getting more and more, right? I'm, I'm not sure even that Debian, for instance, will with Bullseye naturally include Java 8 at all. So, so it's more and more the default Java is 11. Yeah, good, okay. All right. I'm starting to run into... Oh, sorry. I'll just bring it up when we actually get to the topic, I guess. Sorry. Oh, that's great. Yeah. So let's let's go through the topics. Any other topics you want to add? I think that's all. Okay. Well, then what I do say is let's put that one right at the top of the heap and assure that we get to it. So action items, I've still got the JEP to do. And the plugin installation manager increases in popularity. It's being more and more used all the time. So I think we're getting closer and closer to just merging your pull request to replace install plugins.sh internal implementation with plugin installation manager. Cool, that'd be great. I need to double check. I think I resolved the conflicts, but I will double check that. Ah, good, okay. Yeah, and I, I haven't done specific testing, but I think Gareth had, and I'm seeing lots of activity in bug reports where they're using plugin installation manager to replicate problems. So it's it's more and more the, the, the tool of choice. Oh, that's awesome. All I right, would like so, to um, at some point use like an environment file or something that specifies the version of certain things so that we don't have to go around and update 20 um, uh, Docker files. Um, but I, that's something I'll look at in the future. Yeah, and for me, I don't mind it because it's it's actually a pretty easy sed command to do a, a bulk replace. So don't 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 feel obligated. That's great. Uh, if if it happens, that's wonderful. In my case, I just do a, a get ls files pipe to sed minus i, and so it, it's it's actually quite straightforward. Okay. I, I know it, if there are other things that we eventually have that have like versions we have to update all over the place, it's kind of annoying. Like there are right. specific, specific cases in the Docker agent where you have to go around and update several places for the remoting version. Um, so we're looking at doing something for that, but uh, uh -huh. maybe it doesn't apply for the controller image. I don't know. Well, and, and that's so that, that lobbies for a more general purpose tool. Good, good suggestion. Um, the there is a tool Olivier Vernin has a tool called update CLI uh, that he uses to do these kind of sort of sophisticated updates it's a piece of Golang code that he uses for various update checks think of it as a super advanced dependabot that knows very pre precise things so uh, it might be yeah. worth a discussion with him to say hey could we extend that to also maintain these version numbers. They're oh, you're that's, right. That's awesome. Cool. Yeah, that'd be great. Anything else on plugin installation manager? Uh, not for me. 
then we, we still have a topic on multi-arch improvements for Docker images. It will probably be many weeks before I'm back to that one. I haven't seen any activity from Jim on it, so I'm assuming it's quiet for now. And I've still got the action item to note the, the PR for the roadmap changes that came out of the Contributor Summit. We do have a new a June Contributor Summit is being planned now, uh, the day after or the day before CDCon. Just out of curiosity, are the, are the agents the S390X and the PowerPC agent, are those stable now for you? They are. They're still okay. connected, still working. Uh, and in fact, I'm using them at times for just general purpose testing and they're quite reliable. Cool. I know we had some issues for a little while, so I just wanted to check on that. Yeah, and, and I actually installed operating system updates on the PowerPC and, and confirmed that it could reboot and it survived. I was a little scared, but it worked. Yeah, so, and, and the the AMD or the ARM64 agents provided by Amazon have also, as far as I can tell, been been behaving well when they're called. Are you using the new ARM64 agents that are um, even lighter weight than the ones we were previously using? I don't think so. I don't think the Packer image has been changed at all. So I think, oh, I think we're still using the original ones that you created. I think those, there's a cheaper option now um, that we maybe can look into. So I'll, I'll look into that for the Packer image. Yeah, that that's a that's a, a an interesting one. Thank you. So next topic then was Java 11 as default in, in all our images. So it's already that you said, Alex, it's already the default in Windows Docker and in the Docker install instructions. We don't really have a concept of a, of a default for Windows on the MSI, right? It uses whatever the user installed. Correct. Uh, yeah, it, it checks. Well, the, the precedent is Java 11. If they have both Java 11 and Java 8 installed, it will choose Java 11 as the, you know, when it, it looks for a default JVM to show. The user can always change that um, as they're installing, but it will look for Java 11 first on the system. Cool. Okay. So, so, and I think Tim has, Tim Jacome has proposed um, additional default changes. Uh, and I forget where they were, but I know I've seen a pull request recently from him proposing it. Uh, I think it's it's worth us continuing along that path and just planning that we need to more and more persuade our users they should be using Java 11 for their own benefit. Yeah, I, and especially for Docker, it seems to me that that's kind of um, like if you're running a, a Jenkins controller under Docker, you know, why would you care whether it's Java 8 or Java 11? You know what I mean? Because right. It's not like you have to install the JDK on your host OS and stuff like that. It's all running under Docker. So mm -hmm. that, that's my why I think we can do it first in Docker um, as opposed to even on the agent, you can still build with a different JVM or JDK than the one that the agent is running under. So it, it just to me, it makes sense that we could move to Java 11 as default uh, sooner rather than later on Docker images. Yeah, well, and, and that's, we did it, we, when we did the Docker image change from, from stretch to buster, we, we blogged it, right? Um, and made the change and it doesn't seem to have been a, a terrible disaster, right? I haven't had any active hate mail or anybody saying that was a terrible, awful decision you made. Uh, so we could do the same kind of thing and, uh, change the base image to use Java 11 instead of Java 8. I think that was what you were lobbying, right? Is it, because we have a JDK 11 image now, but we may want a JDK 17 image. It's that the base tag today uses Java 8 and we, right. we eventually want to switch the base tag Jenkins colon Jenkins or Jenkins slash Jenkins colon LTS to use Java 8. Correct. Yeah, that's my that that is my recommendation. 
or suggestion or whatever you want to call it. Yeah, yeah, I think that's that's and and certainly that's a, a place where we would probably want to do it. Likely want that change based on Daniel Beck's guidance earlier on an LTS dot one release. So two dot yeah. what would we guess two dot nine x two dot two nine x dot one or something after that. Now there is there is a conversation going on about when should should we consider doing a Jenkins three in September, and that might be an ideal place to say Jenkins three is is going to go Java eleven. Yeah, I think it's that's about Oleg the time was, Java seventeen releases as well. Yeah, I think that's what Oleg was kind of looking at. Um, I know Jenkins does not currently um, the tests will not currently function under Java sixteen. Um, oh, because of oh. some of the dependencies, like PowerMock does not work under Java 16 right now. Okay. Um, so there, there's a bug on their repo for that right now. So I, I just did a tried to do a build just to see what um, what things fell out, and that was the major thing I found was the testing does not work correctly. Okay. Well, and that's that's a reminder that Java 17 is coming this calendar year, right? Or is planned yeah. for this calendar year. And that is, it is intended to be a long-term release. Everything I've said in, indicates as a long-term, as an LTS Java. Okay, good. Are there other things there that we need to, that need to be of concern for us as we, as we think about how, the, how we make that change? So our, our boundaries when we can do it are pretty narrow, LTS edges. So we've got June or September as the two candidates. Yeah, and probably September is probably good if they're talking about uh, Jenkins 3.0. Um, I assume that 3.0 would be a long-term support release. I, I would think so as well, yeah. I think it's still in discussion, but it's what you remind me is that I need to be sure when I'm in any of those other meetings that are talking about Jenkins three, it's yes, let's use this as our chance to do, you know, for instance, our base image instead of Buster should at that time be bullseye. Our, our, we should be using Jenkins three, we should be using Java 11 and be ready, hopefully pretty soon to support Java 17 in that time frame. Yeah, that sounds good. Good, all right. Anything Adoption, else on? Adoption oh, okay. does have um, Java 16 images that we could um, base things on. At least we could um, build and not test a Jenkins war and then um, pull that into a, a Java 16 Docker image to see if it runs at all. You know, So separate from just the testing portion, we could at least um, see if it runs. So I, I can do something like that. Oh, that's and that's that's uh, so that would say we would take the code we currently have compiled but executed on Java 16. Is that what you're saying? Uh, well, you can build the the, the war file. Um, it, you just can't test it under Java 16. So what I was thinking oh. is actually just just building without doing any tests and then creating a Docker image with a, a JDK 16 um, and see if it runs at all, you know, or what errors pop up or things like that. So so there, I was assuming you would do the, keep the build that we've got with Java, the Java 8 based build and assure that it runs with Java 16. You're going one step further. Let's compile it with Java 16 as a way to learn what the changes are that Java 16 brings if, for compiled code. Yeah, if, if there are any, I know there are some changes to the, um, uh, just in time compilation and, and things like that. So it, it's possible that, or sorry, there are optimizations in the, in the 16 and 17, from my understanding, um, that, that might be useful, uh, that might be helpful for, for our workloads. But we, we can just take the, the Java 8 or, uh, and run it under um, uh, Java 16. 
I can do that too. Good. Okay. That's that's a those would both be yeah very interesting, particularly as we're getting towards. I don't know if a Java 17 early access build has been generated yet, but certainly Java 16 can perfectly reasonably be considered a, a reasonable predecessor, reasonable experience for what Java 17 will include with Java 17 getting more than that. Yeah, that, that was my um, kind of assumption. I don't think that they're producing any um, Docker base images with a 17 early access. So okay. that was why I was kind of starting with 16 at least. Oh, and, and I like that because that says we leverage all the work that Adoptium has done and and just use their images because we're going to be using their images anyway. That's that's wonderful. Now, have you seen anything on on any platform specific topics like ARM 64 support focus in 16 or 17 beyond what we already had? We've got great support already, but is there anything additional there that we need to be aware of? I think it just it's just continued iterative improvement. Okay. Since those platforms are become are, you know, just are more popular and, and becoming more popular because they're right. lower power than than Intel or AMD. Um, so I think it's just gonna get more popular. So they're probably just spending more time adding, you know, fixing bugs, improving things is, is my understanding. Great. Excellent. Thank you. Anything else on Java 11? Uh, not for me. So skipping open container labeling, one minute update on She Code Africa. We've been accepted to the Contributhon. It will start April 1. It's focused on pipeline examples and getting those into the plugin source code. They'll then be visible on Jenkins.io as well. Uh, looking forward to it. Looks like we'll be mentoring up to nine uh, women from Africa who will be first time contributors to the Jenkins project. That's awesome. That's way awesome. Yeah, so that's, um, I, am, I am thrilled. We may, we may do more than that for right now. This, that looks like about the stretch of it and I've got mentors aligned. We may have to go begging specific plugin maintainers for a little additional help as we go through it, but we'll see. So next one was, Proposed Docker changes, and I think the big one here is install plugins.sh. We just want to continue testing that. I don't have anything to report on the others. Do you have anything you wanted to flag, Alex? No, no, not for me. Okay, all right. And quick update on securing the Jenkins delivery pipeline. JEP 229 using plugin release delivery through on what we would call trusted infrastructure or on non-developer desktops is so outside the developer desktop is working and we've got some first experiments. The uh, platform labeler plugin is has implemented it. I also implemented it in the token macro plugin. Oh, you did. Oh, very good. Okay. I, I don't have any PRs yet to merge to, to have a, a release done, but it, um, it uh, publishes the incrementals and has the correct version and stuff like that. So I'm, I'm assuming when there is a PR, um, it will, it will work. So. Excellent. Yeah. So, so I've released several versions of pot platform labeler. Some of them are kind of nonsense. It was, Oh, this feature is documentation, but, uh, it's, it's worked. I'm, there is additional work happening there. Gareth Evans is exploring to see if there's a way that we could preserve, um, preserve semantic versioning and still have JEP 229 working. Yeah, that was one thing that I was, um, there is a way you can do that, but you have to manually um, update the prefix versions as opposed to having them auto updated. Yeah, um, and what he's, oh, go ahead. And Jesse did not recommend that, so I, I didn't do that. <laughs> And I agree wholeheartedly. And what Gareth Scott is because of his past experience on Jenkins X, they were doing semantic version with versioning with automatic maintenance of the version number based on commit messages. There's a there's a, a sort of a standard on called conventional commits where they you you put specific text into your commit message and that is used to apply labels to the GitHub repository 
or to the pull request and let it decide then which kind of version number increment it needs to use. Interesting. Yeah, and, and it's a it's actually a Google Summer of Code project idea. So so we'll see how it works. He may implement it himself or or just continue the idea. But it, it looks like I love JEP 229, but the version numbers are a little intimidating. And if we could preserve semantic versioning with still automation, that's, oh, that sounds very interesting. Yeah, I agree. Then people, last- People thought oh, it was kind of weird seeing like build 862. Right, yes. Yes, <laughs> yes, you, you hit it exactly, right? It's, it's really build eight, 821.v, yeah. uh, A, B, C, D, E, F, A, one, two, three, four, you know, that, that, that is, oh, that's, that's a surprising version number. I can ignore the, the SHA-1 on the end, but that big number at the front sometimes distracts, yeah. Anything else on securing the pipeline? Nope, sounds good. Okay. Uh, security scanning, I don't have anything to report there. I'm watching watching the sneak scan results. And and the the thing that I learned from talking with Oleg is that the a key gap is that the Jenkins HPI packaging is not understood by by the scanners. And this was the thing I didn't realize, and thus it flags outdated dependencies, it flags older dependencies as issues, even if I never run that older dependency in Jenkins. And, and it just, it's a, it's, I don't think we're ever going to persuade Snake to understand HPI packaging. So the, the moral there is keep updating our dependencies with Dependabot. Is there a way to help depend Dependabot with certain things? Because it doesn't seem to like it'd be really nice if Dependabot could um, manage the plugin installation manager tool, for instance. Is there a way to help it? Uh, update CLI, I think, is the closest thing I've seen to a helper, and it's not really a helper; it's a replacement in that case. Uh, but it's a good question. I don't know. I'll have to ask. Very good question. Yeah, good question. Anything else on security scanning? Nope. All right, I think we've covered our topics. Alex, thanks for your time. Thank you, Mark. Bye. See you later.